Alright guys, to begin with our X, Y and Z parameters on eyes, nose and mouth, we need to start with our Warp Deformer hierarchy system. So we're going to make Warp Deformers for the eyes, nose and mouth, but I'm going to go part by part. First, the eyes, alright? I'm going to create a Warp Deformer, but if I select the eyes and all the parts that are inside these Warp Deformers and I hit create Warp Deformer, let's say we're going to call it Warp Deformer eyes X, Y, and I hit create, again, our information dialog box is going to appear with the problem of the parenting system. So do not worry. If you guys have this problem, remember, we can just create a new Warp Deformer without selecting anything, name it the way we want to, and hit create. And a Warp Deformer that is this size is going to appear. And the only thing that we're going to do before putting the parts inside of it, it's just readjust its size, right? And that's what I'm going to do now. Perfect, now we have the Warp Deformer with its intended size. So, before putting our parts inside of this Warp Deformer, I want to go to the Inspector tab and look for the number of conversion divisions. Here I have a 5x5, five five, but since I want to have more control when transforming my eyes, I'm going to move it to 8x8. Eight eight. Remember, the higher the number, the more conversion divisions, the more control you have when transforming, alright? So, if you guys want to, you can increase the Vezier number divisions. The Veziers are these green parts right here. So, I'll actually go and apply at least 6x6, six six because sometimes we're going to be transforming different parts of our eyes when we're looking left or right. So, once we have our Warp Deformer the way we want it to be, we're going to go to our Deformer tab. We can see that we have all the Warp Deformers of the eyes. I'm going to click the arrows so we can see them clearly, all right? And what we're going to do now is move one by one into the Warp Deformer eyes XY. And this is basically how we set up our hierarchy system. Once this is done, you guys can see that since our Warp Deformer eyes XY contains everything, once I select it, I can move all the parts at the same time. And this is actually what we need. Alright guys, once we have our deformer hierarchy system set up, we're going to go to our head, angle X and Y parameters. But before that, as a safety measure, I'm going to lock everything that is inside our warp deformer eyes XY. So I don't click anything by accident, okay? Now, back to the parameters. What I'm going to do now, it's just the same thing that we did with the head before, right? We're going to set up X first and then Y. And uh, we can do this, we can actually unlink parameters. Nothing is going to happen, we're not going to lose any kind of progress, but we're going to be able to use our X and Y parameters easier, okay? So I'm going to begin with X and I'm going to create three keyforms and I always like to go with the left side first and that's what I'm going to do. All right, guys, I'm going to give you some cool tips to use with our Warp Deformers, okay? We're going to learn how to use our Temporary Deform tool. So this is pretty cool and it can save a lot of time. Let me show you. We're going to select our Warp Deformer. And instead of starting just to move stuff all around, we're going to go to this button on the bottom corner and we're going to click it. Once we click it, our Temporary Deform tool appears. Now, we can go to the Tool Details tab and we can see that we have a deformation method, uh, warp division numbers, and uh, a bunch of different kind of things that we can select. Now, let me show you, for example, for the sides, we can select the red dots right here and we can move them. I'm gonna move them with shift so we can have a better and easier way to transform the eyes. And this is going to help us a lot, right? So for the sake of this example, I'm not going to go too in depth on the anatomy of the face on how to warp everything out. But I do want to share this tip with you guys because I think this is really awesome and really useful. So I'm going to work it out a little bit, right? Uh, so it looks cool. And once I have it, we can have a quick result on how the angle X will work. Look at this. Alright guys, let's begin with our angle Y. Angle Y is going to be really similar to the angle X, but there's a couple of things I want to show you again. So we're going to select our mesh. We're going to add three keyforms and I'm going to go to angle Y minus 30. That is usually when we look down. I'm going to turn on my flat reference to see where my eyes are looking. And I'm going to move them down accordingly. Now, we can see that this motion is kind of a... It's okay, but we can enhance it a little bit more with perspective. So we're going to select again our mesh and we're going to go to temporary deform tool again. This time I'm going to change the deformation method and I'm going to go to perspective. And this one is awesome 
because I just need to go to one corner and while pressing shift, I can move inwards or outwards the shape and it's going to be in a perspective like fashion. Once I feel like I have a good transformation, we can see how the face looks and this enhances a lot our look as you guys can see, okay? I'm going to do the same with the upwards part and I'll see you in a second. All right guys, I'm done with the angle Y parameter. Let's check it out. So I'm going to look down really good and when i look up we did the same thing with the perspective as you guys can see and it gives a lot of depth it's just a simple touch but it gives depth to our motion and this is really important when creating our characters okay all right guys let's continue with our nose now you may ask me why the nose if the mouth might be more interesting right the truth is that the nose is really helpful because since the nose is usually on the middle of the face every time we use the angle x for example the nose is going to help us determine where the half of the face is therefore it's going to help us determine where the mouth should be positioned so let's begin with our nose now guys, depending on how you made your noses, this process may vary, but let me show you something that is still really important to take into account. So I have a nose light and a nose line. Depending on the pieces that you have, I would recommend to instead of making a single warp deformer that contains both parts of the nose, make individual deformers. So we have more control on the transformations. And well, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create warp deformer nose light xy and i'm also going to create the warp deformer nose line xy all right now once both are created we're going to select both deformers and we're going to create three keyforms for each deformer on the angle x parameter and of course we're going to transform accordingly All right, guys, once we have a position that we like on the angle X, we can transform. I'm going to, again, use our deformation method of the temporary warp. And this time I'm going to go to distortion and I'm going to select the middle so I can move the nose like this. So once I'm comfortable with the position, I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to do the same one with the light, okay? Now I'm going to go with free transform and lower the light a little bit. I'm going to hit OK and this shape as you guys can see, is going to give us a little bit of volume in our nose. Now, this is a little bit scuffed though, but it helps into communicating the idea. Once we have this transformation done, we can continue on reflecting the parameter, okay? So I'll see you in a second, and after that, we're going to jump to our angle Y. Okay guys, now let's continue with our Y parameter. While selecting the nose light XY and the nose line XY parameters, I'm going to create three keyforms, same process as always, right? I'm going to look down and I'm going to move our nose down as well. But our nose is separated into parts, right? It's upper part that will be the light and the lower part that will be the nose line. Now, if you're looking down, the bottom of our nose is going to be less visible. So what I'm going to do is simply shrink it, something like that. And our nose light, that is the top of our nose, is going to be much more visible. Now the last part will be the nose looking up, so let's do that, okay? I'm going to select our two parameters and go up. Now, when we look up, the bottom part of the nose is the one that is going to be more visible and the top part of the nose is going to be less visible. And now let's check out our angle X and Y movement. Looking up, looking down, that looks really great. All right, guys, now let's continue with our mouth. Now, to make our mouth is going to be really simple. Since we don't have any kind of warp deformer and we just have loose parts, we're just going to select them all and we're going to create the respective X and Y warp deformer for the mouth, okay? Now, the process on the angle X is actually going to be the same as the eyes and the nose. So, guys, I'll see you in a bit, okay? Hi guys, a little tip here. You guys can see that I'm moving the mouth of the character in that angle. Well, that's because I want to check that it's going to work when the VTuber model is talking in those angles. Now I'm going to continue with the parameter Y. I'm going to add three keyforms and we're going to go up and down. One last check to see if our mouth moves correctly. And I like it. All right, guys, before we continue to our last most complex part on the tutorial, I'm going to show you the easiest one. 
and it's going to be the angle C or Z in all our warp deformers that we have done today, okay? So, you guys can see that when we move our head in the angle C, nothing moves, but what we're going to do is go to our deformer tab and we're going to unlock our head Z rotation deformer and we're going to put all our new warp deformers in this rotation deformer. We're going to start with the eyes, then the mouth, and then the nose. And once we have done this, we can go to our angle C or Z and check how our face now rotates with the head. All right, guys, on to the last process. But before we continue, please follow me through the whole process because this is a really delicate process and it's actually really easy to mess up and it's not easy to fix most of the times. So let's begin. Let's go to our parameters tab, specifically angle X and Y, right? We already have our face left and right and up and down rigged, but what about the corners? We're going to link angle X and Y again and we're going to realize that our corners are not rigged. What we're going to do is do that, right? It's going to rig the corners and then reflect onto the other side. But reflecting linked parameters is not the same as reflecting individual parameters. In fact, it's a little bit more tricky. And this is where the troublesome part comes in sometimes. So guys, what I'm going to do is fix the face right? In these corners, only one side. But there are actually two ways of doing this. The first way is selecting the parts that we've worked with today and, well, fixing them and rigging them from start to finish. Or the other one is selecting all these parts, going to modeling, parameter, and synthesize corners. Now, this method is not a miracle, right? It might work if the model is really simple, if the head is really simple, but it might not work for more complex stuff. And even for this kind of head that I have behind me, it's not going to work that great. Let me show you. I'm going to hit OK. And once we synthesize corners, our face, it's going to look like this. And I have to say, there is a lot of room for improvement here. So look what of these two ways works for you and read one side. I'm going to make one side and then I'll see you in a second to show you how to mirror these keyforms into the other side on these two linked parameters, okay? So I'll see you in a bit. Hi guys, in this route, I went without using the synthesized corners because, well, I like to have more control when I do stuff and I decided to do it like that. Also, all the techniques that I'm using in this time-lapse are the ones that we already saw in the beginning of the video. Alright guys, we did it! Let's take a look at the difference. So, this is what we used to have, right? And now, this is what we have. Isn't it amazing? This is awesome! I mean, if you think this is awesome as well, please leave a comment, leave a like, tell me how it went for you, because, uh, well, I like this, right? This is amazing. So guys, now I'm going to show you how to reflect our motion from these linked parameters. The first thing I'm going to do is unlink the parameters again. But before that, look at this. I'm going to position this keyframe on the angle 30, 30. I'm going to unlink parameters and now angle X and Y separated, they are under 30, 30 keyform, right? Funny thing here is that even though they are separated, they are still linked. So you guys can see that when we have our angle Y on 30, and I move our angle X. And you guys can see that we have to change our minus 30, 30 here, all right? When we go to angle Y zero and we move our angle X, now our movement is different. And when we go to our angle Y minus 30 and we move the angle X, we can see that we have again one of the other corners. So this is what I mean when I say that reflecting linked parameters is really different from reflecting individual parameters, right? So let's do it. I'm going to select all the parts that have been affected by that parameter. And you guys can see that our angle Y also lights up. And while selecting this keyform on angle X, I'm going to go to this menu that says show palette menu. When we click it, this menu is going to appear. And we're going to look for the reflect motion option. Once we click it, this menu is going to appear and we're going to reflect horizontally. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, our face is mirrored. Let's link the parameters so you guys can see it clearly. I'm going to link them and now the 3030 is equal to the minus 3030. And this is one of the things that I said that if we did it wrong, it was going to be a mess to fix because 
If we just try to go and right click on the object and hit reflect, what would have happened is that our parameters were going to invert and that would have been a total mess. So let's go back. Now I'm going to select all the parts again and I'm going to move my angle Y to zero so I can copy and paste my 30 zero parameter, okay? I'm going to position myself on angle X again, go to the hamburger menu, that is the menu with the three bars, and click reflect motion reflect motion horizontally because we're working with the angle x we hit ok and now our angle x30 y0 it's going to be mirrored now the only thing we're missing is our angle minus 30 minus 30 so we're going to go to angle x30 y minus 30 and we're going to go to our menu again and reflect motion remember guys every time we click reflect motion you gotta be on the keyform that you want to duplicate we're going to click ok and our face is going to have the full range of motion. Let me show you. I'm going to link the parameters again. And now our face, ladies and gentlemen, is completed. Well, guys, that will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope this video was really helpful for you. In our next video, we're going to go for a haircut. And we're going to go to the process and also physics and all those kind of things. So thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a good day. See you later, guys.